Expectations. The weather has hampered us a bit, but it's been a really good turnout. We think it's probably the biggest anti-Tory or anti puts demonstration since Margaret Thatcher came to Swansea all those time ago in the 80s. And we've had word from Bob Crow, he's put up a 24-hour picket of heaven. She's not going in, she's going downstairs with Jimmy Savile. Right, so I want to do two things. A big shout out to all the mental health workers here today. Okay. And a second shout out to all the Unison members here today. The Unison have worked very hard, this, particularly the city and county branch, for a lot of their information, the leaflets, and the region as well as provided the, the, the speakers here today. Um, like I said, I'm a social worker. One of the things in the, in the Queen's speech was this threat to jail social workers for neglect. Now some of you might think that's a good idea. But actually when they attack social workers, they're not attacking social workers, they're attacking the most poorest and vulnerable people in society, the people that social workers represent and work with. Make no mistake about it, their attack on social workers is another attack on ordinary people. So why right, they continue to demonize us, we as workers, we have to accept cuts in our own conditions, cuts in our own pay, and at the same time, the people we're meant to be representing, they're getting cuts in services, they're getting cuts in the provisions, and they're getting cuts in benefits. And I think this the situation we're in now is that so many people are getting despair with the cuts, that in mental health we're seeing an increase of people with suicidal ideation. This is not a funny situation for the world to be in. This is dreadful, and it's a direct product of the cuts. Now, what I want to hear today from the speakers, and the reason why I'm first up today, is that the very first meeting that we've met at, we made a decision that all speakers today had to be two things. The one, they had to be opposed to austerity and the cuts, and two, they had to be prepared to do something about it. We made a decision that nobody here today is going to be an apologist for cuts or austerity. So we've got, we've got the task for the crowd here. When people say, and I will test you on this later, that we want to fight back, we want strikes, we want demonstrations, we want occupations, we want protests, you to cheer. But when they say, <laughs> we just have to be a little bit realistic, there's only limited things we can do, we've got these budgets to look after, you feel free to boo them as much as you want to. Hey! 
The other thing is that people will try and demonise us because we're protesting. We're all about the values that we have as protesters here are all the best values in society. We're the people who stand up. We're the people who stand up for the oppressed. We're the people who stand up for the exploited. We've got all the best values. The people, people making these cuts are the ones that hate each other and hate everybody and try to turn us against each other. No, no one let us to know anybody that demonize us as protesters. We are the future. One of the big problems of the general election was four million people voted for an organization which I'm not going to mention because it makes me sick. They campaigned on racist politi politics. You know who they are, you know what they said. And I think we've got to make a statement today that anybody who tries to divide us, we jump on straight away and we stop it. When they try to blame benefit scroungers, when they try to blame immigrants, when they try to blame Muslims, when they try to blame strong trade unions for being greedy, we stop it. When it comes to being interviewed, when people talk to us, we say, we are going to stand up against racism, we're going to stand up against anything that divides us. We are all Muslims, we are all Hindus, we are all Jews, we are all people of this world and we are not going to take this anymore. Brian talked about unity, and that's what we need, is unity. In my dreams, we would be a fantastic organisation. I'm fed up of voting for people on the best, because that's the best possible choice. Can you imagine if we all were the army on the doorsteps arguing against austerity? I'd like to see that kind of thing in the future. But in the meantime, we can unite, no matter what political party we're in, whether we're just the Green Party, whether we're Plight Cymru or even the Labour Party, we can unite to fight these cuts. What we are here today is a vanguard, a vanguard of the fight against the cuts. With that comes responsibility. From here today, we've got to go out and set up organisations, not only to lead the strikes, the demonstrations, the protests, not only to be part of that, but be in solidarity networks as well. To do the collections, to take the speakers around, to stand side by side with the exploited in the press. That's what we've got to do as an organisation today. We've started, it's been brilliant. Next stop, London next week, we're selling tickets. Let's have a brilliant rally. to me, why do you campaign against austerity? A demo won't change anything. It's easy for you, it's just about catchy sound bites when I tell you. Well, there's nothing easy about campaigning against austerity when the establishment is hell-bent on undermining its validity of labouring us irresponsible, obstructive, naive, but even dreaming of an alternative. There's nothing easy about standing up the austerity machine, which is the routine administration of difficult decisions. How many times have we seen representatives who retreat to their bunkers complaining that they have to administer Tory cuts? There is nothing different between the ideologically driven sell-off of RBS by the previous government as is George Osborne's current sell-off and we will lose £7 billion of our money in this new sell-off. As cuts threaten to sever the very tendons of our society, those governing closer to home should offer hope, not simply resign to the fact that there is no other way. Is it that they really think that there is no hope, that there is no reason to fight, and that habit of maintaining power is enough for the cosy establishment in Cate's Park? Vacuous titles won't save us either. But there is a reason to fight. It requires guts, vision, and integrity. Austerity is the challenge that is put to us now in our homes, fighting the bedroom tax, in our schools, fighting to save local schools from closure, and in our workplaces, fighting for employer rights and for dignity. When communities fall, we see UKIP trying to gorge themselves on the suspicion, misery and pain left by the bankers smash and grab. They are the anger without hope. They prosper when we don't organise. However, in this area and beyond, communities are now organising. In Neath, a movement to switch the lights back on when the council's Scrooge cancelled Christmas last year. In the Avon Valley, communities uniting to keep community centres and swimming pools open so they are not forgotten valleys. Swansea, Bridgend, 
claimants helping claimants fight the bedroom tax and fighting eviction. In Scotland, a social movement has demanded more and the government has listened. Their discussion is as much about what sort of society they want and will create as about the romantic ideal of national destiny. They have taken Scotland to Westminster in their droves. No difficulty in rejecting the self-serving council of the Bullingdon profiteers. They are on their feet, not on their knees. So today, Swansea, we stand on our feet in the radical Welsh tradition. This is what we do today. Some of our representatives have forgotten this. Some have become lazy, some have become fearful. But not us today. We have moved by anger to campaign in a positive way. For our communities, with our communities, in our communities. That is the only way we'll do, we'll do it. Swansea. They tell me it's normally always sunny here, so I apologise for bringing the rain from London. But actually, a couple of weeks ago, I was in the sun on the streets of Sheffield at a march very much like this one, where the people from unions, people from housing campaign groups, people from anti library cuts groups. And you know what? It was a big march in Sheffield, about a thousand people. And I reckon you've done about the same today in Swansea. And I think Sheffield is bigger than Swansea, so well done, Swansea! Now I think what we should be doing is thinking for a second about why we're all here today. We're gathered against austerity. And what is austerity? In short, it is making the poor, the disadvantaged and the young pay for the greed and fraud of the bankers. And we're not going to take it anymore. Now I think I'm going to be at a lot of marches like this in the coming weeks and months. And what's really important about them is it's bringing people together. And that's what we need to do because all of us have one particular campaign that's particularly close to our heart. Perhaps it's what you work on most. Perhaps it's for a living wage. Perhaps it's against the library cut. Perhaps it's to defend houses, people who are facing eviction. Whatever it is, great. Put up lots and lots of effort into that. But also help at least one other campaign. Join with something else because together we're so much stronger. Now I want to echo the remarks about London next week. I hope to see every single one of you there. But if you're not, make sure you're tweeting and Facebooking and everything else, making sure everyone knows it's on, knows it's big, because it is going to be really big. Because what we're seeing, what I've seen in the days and weeks since that election night, and I know I joined you on election night, I was pretty depressed when I heard that exit poll. The difference was I had to be depressed on national television that evening. But don't be depressed. Be determined and acknowledge that yes, we have a Tory government, but they are there with only the votes of about 25% of eligible voters. They do not have a mandate. And they only have a majority of 12. So we need to keep up the pressure, keep up the pressure on the streets, keep up the pressure fighting evictions, keep up the pressure on fighting against their attempts to end the hunting ban and keep up badger culling. Keep fighting to defend the union rights because it's when people organise together as workers that they can have strengths against the bosses. Let's organise in our workplaces, let's organise in our streets, 
organise in our homes, organise everywhere, fight and bring down this government. Thank you. I got you to play Kirby candidates to be uh, uh, a statement from Leanne Wood. We are told that austerity and cuts are necessary for the health of, our, of the economy. Yet a number of eminent Nobel Prize winning economists say that austerity is economic illiteracy and bad for our so-called recovery. Austerity has resulted in the single biggest transfer of wealth we have seen in the UK in living memory. In some of the most deprived areas of Wales, and indeed Western Europe for that matter, we have seen cuts to schools, hospitals, libraries, day centres for the elderly, youth services, nursery education and workers' terms and conditions. Friends, nothing is sacred and we are told that the worst is yet to come. What will we be left with of our valued public services by the time the Tories have had their way? Plain Cymru believes we must not give up hope that we can change the situation. Some of that hope comes from the fact that people like you have gathered here today and are prepared to make a stand and fight for what is right. Austerity politics, in any form, pursued by the Tories or other political parties, must be countered. There is an alternative, and pursuing that alternative is something we must do. Not for ourselves, but for the sake of generations yet to come. Thank you for taking strong action against those who want to take away what matters to us most in our communities. Jochevel Yam. Hello everyone. It's John's, not Jones. Classic mistake. No problem. I, am, I don't belong to any political party and I've never been on strike in my life. But I am horrified that I have had to be on strike. Last week, the campaign is still going on. It's to say, a service that serves the most vulnerable children and young people in Swansea. People don't know about us because we're hidden away. We're not school-based. We are centrally employed and they are planning and actually they're starting to implement 44% cuts to this service and they are not evenly spread. There are questionable family relationships as well in the service and things are simply not being done properly. Procedures are not being followed. Please support our campaign. Next week we'll be on strike for three days. As I say, I have never been on strike in my life and I've been teaching since 1987. 1987. No striking until now because I am horrified and my colleagues are horrified at what's happening. Follow procedures please, Swansea Council. Cabinet members, please listen to us. Follow procedures, that's all we are. And we ask for fairness. You'll find us in Civic Centre next week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We're not going to give up. Things are too bad, too bad, and it's affecting the most vulnerable. Mental health people, mental health pupils, the most vulnerable. People are too ill to go to school. Not just the medical cases. Pupils are too anxious, too, too anxious to go to school. They can't leave their homes. They need teachers. Not teaching assistants, not agency staff, they need permanent teachers who they trust. Please support our strike action next week. We do not take life, we don't we don't take strike action lightly. As I say, I've never been on my stri on strike in my life before. And I'm angry that I have to take this action now. Please support us and thank you for listening.
listening. Well, I must say that I'm uh, from People First, which is a political movement in Cambridgeshire, and we basically are championing bottom-up politics. We don't think that people should have decisions made for them from the top and then be consulted later. I've been asked to say a word for the, about the NHS. Uh, I used to be a doctor in the NHS, but unfortunately by exposing a private practice scam, taking NHS money for private patients, I got suspended and I'm now blacklisted and I'm one of the few doctors in Britain who can't get a job. Now, I'm worried about the NHS in Wales, and we need to look at things together. Now, we're all together here, we're not with our political party banners, and there are many people here who are not in political parties. And we have got to stop playing football with the NHS. We have got to look at it, we have got to see what is going wrong, be honest, tell people what is going wrong, and put it right. There are no excuses for not supporting our NHS because it's the most important thing to so many people and I believe people are dying, dying too soon, are dying because things don't get to them so quickly enough and dying because there is not enough treatment of the right sort in the right place. It's hard when you've got a country with lots of people living out in the rural communities but even in the cities things are going wrong and there is no excuse. So I'd like everyone to support the NHS get together. If you know things are going wrong, tell people. Tell people the truth. And I think that in the end, if we can't save the NHS, what can we do? This is the thing that really unites everyone. Even Tories are in favour of the NHS. So I think if we can support the NHS, turn it round, and with all the other things which are important, like social services, without good social services we can't get people out of hospital, like having decent wages and a decent life because if you are poor, if you are stressed, you are more likely to fall ill. So we have got to change society, work together and by all means demonstrate. Come with me to London next weekend and we will show everybody what is going on, what the writing is on the wall and that these cuts must stop. government under the poverty line, under Major and Thatcher on a council statement. I remember that my father always used to say, working class people, we don't ask for much. A house and maybe a garden, a decent job that pays the bills, free health care and social security, where if we get down on our luck or poorly, free education for our kids and a passion for when we're getting on a bit. We're not asking the earth, we're not asking for everything, and yet it feels that everything we fought for, our grandparents fought for, the spirit of 45, the welfare state, everything is being taken away from us. It feels like over the last 20 or 30 years, something very strange happened. Not only on this island, but all over the world. The rich had a party. We were never at the party. We were never invited to the party. We were never even part of this party. But now that the party's over, they're telling us we have to pick up the tab and pay for the damage. We, in the People's Assembly, take a very principled position. The people who had the party must pay for the party. While they're telling us that the party is over, they're still partying. And I'm not talking about sales of champagne and cocaine. I'm talking about the richest 1,000 people in the city of London who've seen their wealth double to such astronomical proportions that they could pay off the entire deficit and still have three million each to keep the wolf from the door. And yet we see people frightened of losing their homes from measures like the bedroom tax and benefit cuts. So, it seems like it's a tale of two cities because some people tonight 
They're not going to use their jobs. They're going to get bonuses. Some people tonight are not going to lose their homes. They're going to get to keep their mansion, keep their playground. It's a tale of two cities. Banks got bailed out. People got left out. Banks got bailed out. We got sold out. It's not a recession. It's a robbery. It's a smash and grab. in the world. It's just the money's in the wrong hands, in the wrong place, with the wrong people, doing the wrong thing, and we have to take the money back and take the power back. So I just, I just want to thank, send my greetings from Cardiff People's Assembly, and I just want to end by saying that change comes from power, and power comes from organization. We need to build a mass, a mass power organization across Wales to build people's assemblies, not only in Swansea and Cardiff, but in every community in Swansea, amongst every constituency. Because this can't just be a movement of activists. It has to be a movement of the people, of communities, of social forces, of the mass democratic forces in the city and across Wales. We know we have a government that wants to spend the next 100 days taking back what we fought for over the last hundred years, so poor people and working class people are going to have to learn to do what they once did and organize. So I just really want to wrap up by saying we have a tremendous battle ahead, but we've never lost a battle that we fought, and we never won a battle unless we fought. We fought to end the slave trade, and we prevailed. We fought for women to have the right to vote, and we prevailed. We fought for workers to have the right to freely organize, and we prevailed. We fought to end Nazism and Hitler fascism, and we prevailed. We fought against colonialism, because a country that oppresses another can't be free itself, and we prevailed. We marched to free Nelson Mandela, and we prevailed. So I think that if we fight back, we're going to win, because it wins the time, it's cold. It's summertime, it's hot, we march in all seasons, we keep hope alive. So I just want to bring greetings once again from Cardiff People's Assembly. You know, uh, we have a tremendous struggle ahead, there may be a moral struggle, and maybe a physical struggle, but it has to be struggle. So see you in London, and keep on marching, and see you on the streets. Thank you very much. Um, as you say, I'm the branch secretary of the Swansea branch of the RMT. Um, the RMT has had a long tradition of uh, militancy and fighting for workers within the rail, maritime and transport industry for uh, good rates of pay, good conditions of service and safety in the workplace. But it's not just, uh, it's not just the workers that we represent. We obviously represent the wider communities. For example, Network Rail recently and a massive yes vote for strike action um, on behalf of our members of Network Rail on the signalling side and on the maintenance, track maintenance side of the railway network for Britain. Now a lot of people, and including the, uh, the ruling classes, have decided that we're earning too much. Our members earn too much. And we're not allowed to actually fight for a decent pay rise when prices of uh, utilities and food are going through the roof. It seems strange enough that we're earning too much. We're not allowed to have a 1% or a 2% pay rise. The same as public sector workers. But then again, our members of parliament in Westminster are now accepting a 10% pay rise for themselves. It seems a bit strange that these individuals are telling normal working class people that they should struggle on their normal uh, minimum wage or if they're lucky enough to get a living wage while they're living it up in London on their expenses and their highfalutin uh, salaries. We've always fought for decent pay, conditions of service for people who put a service out to uh, the general public uh, right across the piece. And in the Queen's speech, we've been attacked now on a different front. Where it's decided that to take direct action on the last, the, last, uh, the last stand, when we can't negotiate any further with our employers, and we need to take direct action, it's decided now that all in all, 
the, the, the percentage of people turning out to, to uh, vote on strike action and then to say yes on strike action would make it nigh on impossible to take direct action against uh, against the employers who refuse to look after their em employees, whether it be be pay or health and safety at work. And then again, strangely enough, the people making these decisions didn't actually get the percentage to give them a mandate in the first place. It was mentioned earlier on that the Tory government only got in on a 25% vote. So how can they say to the working people that they've got a 50% turnout and then a 40% yes vote on top of that? It's absolutely ridiculous that working people struggling day by day to look after their families, look after their homes, have an extra fight on top of that against people who they didn't actually vote in. So this is why the RMT are carrying forward with a fight that we've always carried forward. And we ask all trade unions and all, all workers to group together in the fight against this Tory government, against austerity. Because alone we can't do it. It's only together that we can take action and get results. As a dearly departed General Secretary, ex-General Secretary of the RMT, Bob Crow said, if you spit on your own, you might make a puddle. But if you spit together, we'll drown the bastard. I'm proud to bring you greetings of solidarity from the Fire Brigade Union in Wales. And it's been said a few times that we're living in unprecedented times. But once again, I'm proud to stand shoulder to shoulder with you here today. And I'm also extremely proud to be a part of this fantastic movement. And we know that this movement is under attack from this Tory government. Indeed, we're all under attack. Trade unionists, the elderly, the disabled, the most vulnerable in society, those people we should be seeking to protect. But if ever a fight back was saying enough is enough, if ever a fight back was saying we'll not tolerate this any longer, then this fight back today is sending that clear message. The FBU, the fire service, have been under attack for some years. And here in this little corner of Wales, they've not been exempt from it. We've seen the removal of fire engines to be replaced by nothing more than a parcel force van with a fraction of the equipment that we need and a fraction of the water that we required to deal with the incidents we have to deal with on a daily basis. We see firefighters having to work a 96 hour shift. That's like going to work on a Monday morning and going home on the Friday morning. And these are being imposed by a management that then get paid bonuses for imposing these sorts of things on FBU members and firefighters. And I want to take this opportunity to pay tribute to firefighters and FBU members in Essex who this evening would have been taking strike action. But by their management, they went and locked them out last night. So they've not just denied fire cover from one evening. And these firefighters are taking action to defend the service. Defend the service from losing a quarter of the workforce and imposing terms and conditions on firefighters and control members that are utterly disgraceful. And I also want to pay tribute to a good friend, a good colleague and comrade, Ricky Matthews who was dismissed from his service last year for taking lawful strike action. Lawful strike action alongside other FPU members who was dismissed for standing up for his community and for his workforce. And I'll leave you with this. At our recent conference, we were addressed by a Spanish firefighter, Roberto Rivas, so you might have heard of it. And he was telling us the story of the privatisation agenda that's going on in Spain. And they were turned out to evict an 83-year-old woman from her home. 
for simply not being able to pay your rent. And you may have seen the slogan, and that slogan has gone worldwide. It started in Spain, it's been adopted in the UK, and it's gone world, world, worldwide. And that Spanish slogan is Rescatamos Personas No Bancos. And that translated is We Rescue People, Not Banks. Comrades, solidarity.